everybody. Thanks for clicking on the video. It's Chris Miller. Got another pickups video for you. Um, I do want to mention that No Shave November is officially over. So this is the last time that I will be rocking the mustache. <laughs> I have to shave this off tonight or early tomorrow morning um, before I go to work. So let's get to the pickups, right? That's why we're all here. Uh, the first pickups that I want to show is, if you remember, two weeks ago when I did a video, I went to a thrift store, had a pretty decent GameCube score, had uh, Smash Brothers and Wind Waker and Mario Sunshine and Metroid Prime. I got them for a buck fifty. Something really uh, didn't sit right with me because I didn't see a console or controllers or memory cards or game, other games or anything like that, power cords, you know. Maybe you know anything about you know game cubes and whatever. The AV cables for those things are worth more than some of the games are. So I went back like two or three days in a row. Um, no console or controllers or anything like that, but I did pick up for a buck fifty. Worms 3D. It's complete. Um, so for you know a dollar fifty for a GameCube game, a complete one. That's a great price, you know regardless of what the game is really so I go over to the game counter uh, and I, I see some uh, I see these 3ds games sticking up let me correct myself three Nintendo DS cases not 3ds games right not Nintendo 3ds games but regular DS games so I ask her to bring the rack over and she brings a rack of games over and I'm taking a look at them none of them have the games in them somehow the games got stolen behind the glass counter. I, uh, I don't know. Whatever. So the lady takes the cases away from me. And she's getting ready to throw them away. And uh, I said, hey, you know, I'll buy those cases from you. And she's like, well, there's, there's no games in them. And I'm like, well, you know, if I find those games at garage sales or I can use the cases for other games that I have, you know, I'd still like to have them. So she brings them over. And I'm like, well, how about three empty cases for a dollar and she's like okay sure so I, I don't know right maybe she's just excited that she made a dollar when she was just gonna throw them away uh, the first game now these games all have their manuals just not the games so first one was tale of tales of despair I guess this was a, a movie I, I, I didn't catch this one I don't know never saw it but like I said it does have the manual and like the precautions manual and all that stuff Next game is uh, Spongebob Atlantis Square Pantis. A game even if I owned, I would never play. But it has the manual and like you know the precautions manual in there. So like I said, if I find it complete at a yard sale or something, or find the game loose at a yard sale, I'll have it complete. The last game, I was kind of bummed that it wasn't actually in there. Mario Kart DS. And again, this one also has the manual with it. The Mario Kart game did have the Club Nintendo points, which I already entered in and used and got the 50 or 60 Club Nintendo points. So just the Nintendo, the Club Nintendo points alone for a dollar is worth it. At least for me, anyway. Um, again, slim, slim pickings last week. Those, just that one game, you know, in three empty cases. Went to the store. My son and I go to the store. It's called Buybacks. You're not going to find the greatest deals there any anymore. Um, they used to be pretty reasonable. I think one of the reasons is, is that they do, you buy two, you get one free on cartridge games. Um, so they raise the price of the cartridge game to offset the cost of having to give somebody a free one. For example, uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day, they had for $97. Just the cartridge. Now last year at Korg's, which is a convention here in, in Columbus, I picked up Conker's Bad Fur Day for 60 bucks, So that we're talking about less than eight months. Um, also, like Banjo-Tooie, they'll have for $37.99. You know, the prices are, are, are crazy. But one thing that they do sell is they sell old uh, DS cases, PlayStation 2 cases, Xbox, you know, Kinect, you know, the, all those old cases. So what I do, and they're 10 cents, right? They're 10 for, 10 for a buck. So what I do is I'll, I'll try and go in there and I'll buy as many of these DS cases that have the Game Boy Advance slot on them. And I'll get to that here in a little bit. But I ended up getting like five or six of those. And then I also bought two 
DS cases, two of the newer DS cases that don't have this, the Game Boy Advance slot up there. In case you find a game that has a Game Boy Advance slot in it, you can just swap it out. So like I said, I think I got like five or six cases or something. And my son picked up a couple PlayStation 2 cases and an original Xbox case and whatnot. But what I do with those cases is um, because they fit your, your Game Boy Advance games. Here's my copy of Mario Kart Super Circuit. What you can do is then you can then go to the coverproject.net, which is a free website, and you can print off the covers and the back arts um, and all that stuff. I'm just trying to get this set up so it's straight. Just want to hold up to the camera. But um, they also have artists that do custom covers. You know, you can, you know, Japanese covers or alternate art styles and whatnot. But you just print them out and you put them in the, the sleeve of the case. And uh, they look great for displaying. See the there's the spine for Mario Kart Super Circuit, and uh, the back label. You can see that, but uh, yeah, they, they look really nice on the shelf. Um, they make it easier for games that you know are actually worth a little bit, especially on Game Boy Advance. You get like Pokemon's and Zeldas and Mario's. Um, you keep them all in nice organized boxes. All right, so I'm at work. Uh, there's a, a girl I work with. She's a big gamer. Um, and I've been looking for a silver GameCube controller. So she traded me a silver GameCube controller for an Indigo or a blue, purple, whatever you want to call it, GameCube controller. And that was really nice of her to do because I needed a silver one, like I said, to complete a, a console that I had. So now I have that console complete. She also gave me a um, Atomic Purple Nintendo 64 controller just my personal philosophy you can never have too many controllers um, for any of the systems that you um, actively collect for and the reason being is is that you might find like a gray one that's broken but the joystick is really good on it and you can just because they're compatible you can take this joystick out and then you'll have a really cool atomic purple one you know fully loaded and ready to go all right so then uh then we had thanksgiving so happy thanksgiving to everybody that uh, is watching and Black Friday was a mess I don't go out on Black Fridays uh, my wife doesn't go out on Black Fridays it's just too crazy but VGMX which is a, a video game music exchange it's another video game store that I like to go to from time to time they're having 50% off video games that weren't in their collector's counter so if you go to video game stores you know what the collector's counter is right it's where they keep all the all the good games all the high end stuff but pretty much everything else in the store was a free game, 50% off. So we picked up some N64 titles. And uh, if you remember from last time, I had 148 games. So we picked up four at VGMX. So that puts us at 152. So we're well over the halfway point and we're on our way to a complete um, set. So NFL Quarterback Club 98. Strangely enough, I have the manual for this. Don't know why. But I've got the game in the manual now. This game was 99 cents, so it was 50% off of that. 50 cents. Next game was Madden 2000. I love this black cartridge case. Uh, the label's in really great shape, and the black and the white really makes that label pop. So Madden 2002, got that for $2.99, so it was $1.50. It's also the last Madden game for the Nintendo 64. I know you probably don't care, but there's your fun fact of the day. Third game I got was Mace, The Dark Age. It's a midway game. Um, it's a fighting game. I got this one for $4.99. It was half off, so $2.50 for that one. Um, it, it's not bad. It's not good either. Okay, It's kind of middle of the road. It's not um, you know, Killer Instinct Gold, or believe it or not, a, a not-so-bad fighting game for the Nintendo 64 Xena Warrior Princess, which is actually a pretty pretty good fighting game. Um, Mace the Dark Age is just kind of, oh, it's just okay. You know, like I said, it's nothing really outstanding about it. The, the characters are, are kind of cool, but that's about it. Uh, the last N64 game that I picked up at VGMX, Arrow Fighters Assault, and I got that one for $3.99. It was half off, so it was like $2. Bucks. Um, it's a flying combat game. Um, not Not really my thing, but again, needed it for for the set 
So I picked it up. All right. Now, before we get into it, um, <laughs> this week, Sunday was Christopher's birthday. So, you know, we, we did the cake thing and we also set up the Christmas tree and, and whatnot. So uh, we had a good time there. But my pickups this week all kind of revolve around this monstrosity right here, the PlayStation 2. We had some, as the multi-tap falls over, we almost, we had some really good pickups this week um, for the PlayStation 2, like I said. And uh, we'll get into those real quick. But PlayStation 2 is one of my favorite systems to collect for. I bought this PlayStation 2, which is still in its box with its styrofoam and everything else. Um, when it came out, I was stationed in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, <laughs> and I went to the KB Toy Store. And I think it was like a bundle they were trying to sell. It was... $399.99 and it was the console and it came with three games of your choice and I think I, I picked I know I picked out NFL game day and I think I picked out some baseball game and maybe Tekken Tag I, I don't remember really maybe I don't even know if that was a launch game or whatever but um, yeah so I just, they, they pulled it out of the box I wrote the serial numbers down and all that stuff and they made me sign this waiver saying that they're not responsible if it's lost or stolen and that if it's broken or damaged, you know, they'd take it back, you know, with a receipt, had to have a receipt. And I also had to sign, you know, saying that I wouldn't take it out to my car, leave it in my car, and then come back in the mall to continue shopping because there was a good chance that, you know, the console would be stolen. Um, but the, the PlayStation 2 came out uh, in 2000, March 4th of 2000. There's about 3,800 games for it, almost 3,900 games um, the last time I checked. Uh, the, the one in the box here is the fat model. Here's what the fat model would look like if it were out of the box. It's another fat model that I own. And then later they came out with a slim model. Very nice and slim. And there was a, a I don't have it, but it's a little stand that it, it can screw into and, and stand straight up vertically. But the cool thing about the PlayStation 2, if you remember, is that you know it played DVDs. Which at the time, a DVD player was going to cost you 200 bucks, and a console is going to cost you 200 bucks. So you could get them both kind of, you know, together if the console wasn't going to cost you more. But the thing that I loved about the, the PlayStation 2 was the peripherals, right? Like, you get the memory cards and you know the the aforementioned uh, multi-tap. Which if you don't have one of these, I recommend getting a multi-tap for a PlayStation 2. Uh, they're pretty cheap. But you can play some fun games like Marvel Ultimate Alliance on them, which are awesome, you know, four-player games. Also came with uh, the controllers you can see there. Uh, the Guitar Hero is probably the most noted peripheral. Um, if the game falls over. This is the Namco GunCon 2. One of the best light guns ever created um, for any console. And you could play, you know, Time Crisis is what I like to play with it um, because it's a really good port of the arcade. But this thing was a beast, sold 155 million units uh, worldwide. So there's your there's your PlayStation fun facts for the day. So let's get back into the pickups. Uh, Lady on Craigslist had a, a PlayStation 2. It was a slim model, and I think it was like silver. It was a silver or white one. I don't really remember. It came with three controllers and you know memory cards and whatnot. Um, and she wanted 50 or 60 bucks for the console. But she had a bunch of games, and she only wanted $4 for the games. Now, Craigslist, you're not going to find somebody that's going to say, hey, I got this box of games, and I just want it out of my house, and, you know, 10 bucks, first person takes it all, right? People kind of know what they have, and that's okay. Um, if you're pricing your items correctly, right? So, you know, if a game sells on eBay for 10 bucks, and you start taking off shipping fees and you know, PayPal fees and final sales fees. That game is really only like a four or five dollar game. And this lady was selling her games, like I said, for four bucks, which isn't a bad price, especially if it's for games that you want, because if you find them at Goodwill, you're gonna pay two dollars and ninety nine cents for them. So you know with tax you're looking at three twenty two, three dollars and thirty cents. And she was charging um, four bucks. But I did get seven games for twenty-five bucks, which equals three dollars and fifty or three dollars and sixty cents a game, which is a great deal. So let's get into it. Almost goodwill prices. But first one is Deus X: The Conspiracy. 
kind of fighting the lights here. I, uh, I'm trying a new lighting setup, complete with the manual. These games are all in fantastic condition. You can tell by the back of the box. This is, uh, you know, like a first-person shooter, first-person per first um, adventure game, action-adventure game kind of thing. The second game I picked up was Star Ocean, Till the End of Time. And again, this is complete. It's also a, a two-disc game, complete with the manual. Uh, really, the best part about this game was that it came with the box. Right, the game goes in the box, and it looks really nice on the shelf. Um, I, I played it for about an hour and 45 minutes. Star Ocean is an action RPG type game. I, I thought it was boring. I'm not really an RPG guy that much anyway. I do like the Kingdom Hearts series, which is fun to play. Um, I think the, the nostalgia there with the Disney characters makes it a little bit more palatable. Star Ocean, you know, the conversation scenes are way too long. The cut scenes are way too long. The combat was nice. The music's great. The visuals are great. It's just not an action RPG game that I'm going to spend probably any more time with. Uh, the next three games are easily recognizable as some of the best RPGs or the best RPG franchise of all time. People, even if you don't play RPGs, people know what Final Fantasy is. So the next game I got was Final Fantasy X for the PlayStation 2. This is a black label copy. All these games are black label. Um, but again, it's, it's complete with the manual. Final Fantasy X2. And again, that has the manual with it. Final Fantasy 12, which I got this game um, for my son for his birthday. So this is one of, was one of his birthday presents. And again, it's complete with the manual. Um, he, he really likes the Final Fantasy games and, and good for him. I don't particularly like action or, or um, I'm sorry, turn-based RPG games. I've never found them exciting. I've tried to play them. I've tried to play Final Fantasy. I've tried to play Golden Sun, The Lost Age, you know, the, you know that kind of stuff. Just wasn't for me. Now, the most bizarre game in this whole lot, a game that I've wanted to play for probably a year, year and a half, and just haven't found it in the wild, Katamari Damacy. If you have never uh, heard of this game or you've never seen this game before, jump onto YouTube and just type in Katamari Damase um, opening scene or, or you know startup music or whatever it is. It's bizarre, man. This game, this game is weird, but it does come complete with the manual. This is a game that we would that I would refer to as this game is Japanese to the max, right? Every everything ab about it oozes, you know, Japan. Now, the last game um, in the lot that I bought, like I said, I got them for twenty five bucks for all seven of those games, so three fifty a piece or whatever, um, was Beyond Good and Evil. This game is amazing. It's complete. Like I said, it's amazing. Um, I've put couple hours into it and I will probably play it to finish it you play as the cover girl here her name is Jade and it's kind of the same story as in a lot of games your your planet or world is under attack and it's up to you to to save it and unravel a conspiracy and all that kind of stuff but it, it kind of reminds me of a little bit Tomb Raider where there's platforming and puzzle solving and then a little bit um Kingdom Hearts, where there's there's a little bit of uh, RPG elements to it, you know, like leveling up, um, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So definitely happy to have those games, and I thought that was a great deal. Those are all going in my personal collection, except for Final Fantasy XII, which I said I, I got for my son for his birthday. So today's Tuesday, so yesterday on Monday, we went out to my favorite uh, video game store, Maxine's Bargain Box, which is in Newark, Ohio. Uh, they not only sell video games there, but they do collectibles. Okay, so they, they do the action figures and 
the Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and, you know, the die-cast cars, comic books. And, of course, they've got DVDs and, you know, all that stuff. They actually hold Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments there every Saturday. Christopher likes to go do that. Um, so I was kind of browsing through his games. I uh, saw an N64 title that I didn't have. And, you know, if I don't have it and it's a decent price, I'm definitely going to pick it up. So we picked up South Park Rally for the Nintendo 64 for 5 bucks, which I thought was a pretty decent deal because this game uh, typically goes for um, 8 to 10 bucks. Um, just loose cart. It's not as good as, you know, say a, a Mario Kart or a Diddy Kong Racing or even a, a Mickey Speedway, you know, for N64. But um, it is South Park characters. I find them mildly entertaining, and I'll check that game out maybe once or twice and then put it away. Um, but I'm looking at his DS case. He got a nice collection of, of DS games, uh, boxed and loose. And I find this. Tales of Despair. Now Craig has three dollars on it. Craig's the guy that you know owns the joint, and it says, "Hey Craig, I said on this uh, Tales of Despair, what what's the best price you can give me for?" It? I said, "Listen, you know, complete in box. It's really only worth like four or five bucks. It's not, you know, how how long do you really want it to sit around?" And he goes, "I tell you what, if you're gonna pay in cash today, since you're buying other stuff, I'll sell it to you for a dollar." So it was a no brainer that uh, we picked this up for a dollar. Right, not the most exciting title, but if you remember earlier, we did pick up the case for thirty-three cents. So now we have a complete DS game for a buck thirty-three. Woohoo! Right. All right. So um, picked up some other PlayStation Two games. I'm looking through his PlayStation Two selection. Uh, picked up a game that I kind of wanted to try out. Outrun two thousand six, Coast to Coast. Got that one for four bucks. It's complete with the manual. Um, I love these arcade racer type games. You know, like I said, Hydro Thunder is my favorite arcade racer. But I also, you know, definitely enjoy Outrun as well as, you know, San Francisco Rush and the Cruising series and, and all that stuff. So I'm definitely going to put some time into that one. Third person racer, you can like change the radio stations and whatnot. It's kind of cool. Last, uh, uh, next game I got was uh, Gen G. Dawn of the Samurai for three bucks. This one's complete. Uh, very beautiful game. Um, if you ever jump on YouTube and watch some uh, gameplay of this video, Gaming Historian actually just did a review of this game, um, which his reviews are always top notch and very informative. But the game is beautiful. The sound's beautiful. The combat is is amazing, and um, it's a really good game you should play. So last game um, I saw on the shelf. I've never seen this game before. It's called Yu Yu Hakushu, the Dark Tournament. And that one is also complete. Now, it says uh, two bucks on there, but when I went to pay, uh, because I bought some stuff and, you know, my son bought some, uh, some other stuff, some Yu Gi Oh cards and some manga books and whatnot, uh, Craig was like, I'll just toss this, this one in for free. So not only did I get this game for free, but he also gave me a break on the DS game. If you've never been to Maxine's Bargain Box, I definitely uh, recommend checking it out. Um, I'll try and put their information you know, down below in the description area and their Facebook link or whatever. And they do have a Facebook page, so definitely recommend jumping on their website because um, it's a great store. So th those are all of the pickups for this week. I've got like a mountain of games to catalog and put away. I want to thank everybody for watching. Hope you guys had a happy Thanksgiving. And remember... Uh, next time I see you, don't freak out. The mustache won't won't be here anymore. And if you'll excuse me, everybody happy gaming. I have a date with a razor.